All hell of bid, it's your boy Big Bid B, and we back for another edition of Big Bid Business. In today's video, we're discussing the fragrance that's sorta new to the channel. I say sorta new because I've talked about this fragrance house in the past, but I've never done a full review. I'm being perfectly honest when I say this here, man. This fragrance house has some bangers, but they don't get the love they deserve, man, and I'm here to change it. Today's fragrance review comes from the house of Commodity, and we're taking a dive into Commodity Velvet, one of their newest releases for 2018. Now you guys may have heard me talk about this fragrance a few times in the past, maybe in a pickup video, a weekly fragrance rotation video, and even in my spring list, so it's obvious that I enjoy it. Alright guys, so here's your official presentation for Commodity Velvet. You have Commodity and Velvet listed on the front on this label here, and then on the back, kind of engraved in the bottle, you have, or embossed in the bottle, you have this Commodity on the back. The official presentation, man, is pretty minimalistic. The bottle was just a very simple wipe. Oh my God, it didn't break. You learned your lesson. Fuck that box. How is this going, going like disrespect me and not break? Look, man, it didn't have to be like that. Back to our regularly scheduled programming. Now I came across this fragrance in Sephora and when I smelled it, I instantly knew it was for me. On my first whiff of this one, it strongly reminded me of Replicas by the Fireplace and that one I gave a perfect 10, so I had to buy this one. When I compare the two fragrances, this one and by the Fireplace, they are similar, very similar, but they have subtle differences. Velvet has that by the Fireplace DNA, but it has some added notes of rose and amber. And I think the comparison between this one and by the Fireplace, not only with me, but other reviews that you may see out there more so comes from that roasting almond that you get in the top which is a key ingredient in this one and by the fireplace but aside from the rose almond and amber there are some additional notes in here you have vanilla you have birch wood and you have coconut water which gives this one a different level of complexity and depth that you don't get in by the fireplace now i'm not saying that by the fireplace isn't one of the dopest fragrances around because it is but this one is a slightly different take on by the fireplace and it's a little lighter as well now not only does commodity velvet smell like luxury it's sweet it's seductive and it's sexy you know, those triple S's. Which, in my opinion, adequately suits the name because when I think of velvet, I think of something smooth and I think of something soft. I also think of coming to America. I mean, what is that, velvet? As with most commodity fragrances, velvet is a unisex fragrance and I think this one seamlessly transitions as something that works for both men and women and I think that's extremely difficult to do when you're looking for a powerhouse fragrance. I mean, a lot of Tom Ford fragrances don't really do that. They even lean very masculine or very feminine even though they are all unisex. But this one, to me, transcends extremely well. I personally believe that this one is a well-crafted, soft, smoky, woody scent with the perfect amount of warmth and sweetness to make it a mass appealing fragrance. I mean, this one is dope. Now, in my limited time with this fragrance, I've gotten good performance. I get about six to eight hours when I wear this one, which is fine in my opinion. If you're wearing this one in the spring or summer, I would suggest that you go light on the trigger and try to target this one for evening wear. I think this one can easily be a go-to fragrance for those close encounters situations, you know, when she wants to feel cuddly or if you want to feel warm and inviting, this is one that you can grab. Again, I picked mine up at Sephora. I think I paid 105 or 106 bucks for this one. This is 100 ml. And um, when I think about the one that's compared to, if you're looking at something like By the Fireplace, I think this one's about 20 to $25 cheaper and it performs is just as well. When I do my official rating for this one, I think it's, um, I have to deduct a point or so for it not being as unique. Now, I know that the makers of this fragrance will swear that it's super unique, but to me, in most Sephora's that you go to, a few slots down, you can find a fragrance that's extremely similar that came out first. Now, I gave By the Fireplace a 10. I gave it a perfect 10 because I love the way that fragrance smells. I think it was unique. Um, and I love the way it performs. I mean, it's a compliment getter. It garners me compliments every time I wear it. And this one has been performing just fine as well. So, I really struggle on where to rank this one. Um, I'm between a 9 and a 9.5. But I think I'm going to give it a 9. I think this is a solid fragrance. This one isn't a carbon copy of By the Fireplace. But when you smell this one, it's going to strongly resemble By the Fireplace. But again, it has those added notes of rose. Right? It has that amber in it. And it really comes off nice and it's a little bit lighter fragrance 
I enjoy it very much. If you got in your nose on this one, comment below and let me know what your thoughts are. I'm your boy, Big B. B. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, tell a friend to tell a friend that we are back again. And tell him, man, be smooth. I mean, velvetly smooth. And go over and hit the goddamn bell.